Hey, God bless you, Pastor Jeff. Another daily uh, word, capital W, again on this gift of repentance, G-I-F-T. Nothing more important in these end times than for you and for me to get right with uh, the living God who gives us this gift. The tragedy of a lot of the lukewarm church, especially in a nation like the United States, which is undergoing huge transformation right now. Many would say in, a, in the opposite direction of where it was um, originally founded. It was founded to be a place of refuge for Christians, evangelical, born again Christians willing to be missionaries to the local people and then eventually to the world. And for many, many, many years, for generations, the United States was blessed because it sent out missionaries. It did have some wise, godly leaders who humbled themselves. George Washington prayed, even in the uh, time for eight years that he was president, he would take an hour, it is said, each day alone on his knees reading the Bible. Uh, and he did not do this publicly. Uh, he, he was a very humble guy, but look at the blessing and oh, how we need a humble person, truly humble. It's one thing to call yourself a Christian. It's another to bear the fruit. The current occupant has a most unusual claim that he's a quote, faith believer. He goes, it is said weekly to a church. At the same time, he advocates for late-term abortion of young children in the womb, and he believes we, the taxpayers, should be paying for that. So this is the 180-degree opposite of Mr. Washington. But today I want to share with you an insight that I have, and it's that you and I have a calling. We don't talk about this enough. It's part of the gift of repentance. And let me first start with John chapter 15 in verse 16. I hope you put your name here because the very first word of this verse starts with the word you. Well, he's, yes, he's talking to his disciples 2000 years ago, but he's also talking to you and me. He says, you didn't choose me, capital M, but I chose you, put your name in there, please and appointed you that you should go and bear fruit. Let me come back to that. I'll finish the verse. And that your fruit should remain. That whatever you ask the Father in my name, he will give you. Like actually, it says he may give you. And these things I command you, this is verse 17, these things I command you that you love one another. Well, that's a whole sermon, right? How best to love, repent, and get the fruit of the Holy Spirit. That's the very first fruit in Galatians 5. Nothing more important than love. The best way to get to love is get rid of your old baggage, your, your old sin strongholds. Yes, Jesus did the work on the cross. He defeated Satan. The same time you and I were born, generations later, still with this curse that gets handed down and we are born as children of wrath, W-R-A-T-H, look it up. Yeah, you know, when I was a new ager, I, I didn't know that, I didn't believe it. I just thought we were, God loves everyone. It's all big thing. All roads lead to God, he's a good guy. And the truth was, I was a sinner, never repented, and, and had catastrophic <sighs> mistakes in my life. I came into the kingdom when I was 50 years old with all kinds of baggage and mistakes, hurting people, and people had hurt me. It was, it was a shadow of a life. So let me go back to this key word here, that you would bear fruit. Well, these again are the fruits of the Holy Spirit that you have to show the fruit. We know each other 
Are you a Christian? Well, do other people see the fruit in you? We have people calling themselves priests and pastors who bear zero fruit. To the contrary, they are really, in many cases, apostate. They are vehicles for the enemy. And frankly, there's only two spirits here on the planet. The spirit of Christ, which will win, ultimately, read the last chapter of the book, or the current spirit in the world, which is really uh, horrifically strong right now, the demonic spirit of the Antichrist. You and I need to take up the weapons of warfare and defeat it. And the key way that you begin is you first have to bear fruit. Let me reread John 15, 16 again because this goes all to this point I wanna make about you have a calling. Jesus says to you and me, you didn't choose me, but I chose you and appointed you that you should go and bear fruit and that your fruit should remain so that whatever you ask the Father in my name, he may give you. I can't emphasize this enough. You are called. You are called. Let's let's look at some other wonderful scriptures on this. Going to move over to 2 Timothy 1, and I'm going to read 7, 8, and 9. 7 is this classic one that you and I know. God has not given you a spirit of fear, but of power, love, and a strong mind. What a gift. This is the gift of God. This is the promise. This is already done. It's your inheritance. It's in a bank, if you will, <laughs> a spiritual bank account. Yeah, appropriate it. Use it. Take it. God did not give you fear. The fear going on in the planet right now, that's from the enemy. It's one of his best ploys. Not the only one, but it's one of his better ones, but it's uh, completely false and defeated. God didn't give you that spirit. You can take authority over it, and greater is the spirit in you than any spirit in the world. You know that one too. And then look at verse six. I'm sorry, verse eight. Second Timothy 1, 8. It says, therefore, in other words, not having any fear, but you have got power, love, and a strong mind. Therefore, don't be ashamed of the testimony of our Lord, nor of me, his prisoner, but share with me in the sufferings for the gospel, according to the power of God. Well, that's another whole topic. Yes, thank God for sufferings, because in part one, you get stronger. You get stronger. You lead a comfortable, um, hedonistic, worldly lifestyle, which is uh, sadly the case with many pastors, priests, and worship leaders, or whatever today you are not partaking in the sufferings. It's the sufferings where you go deeper into your soul and you, you realize you have replaced uh, the fear of God and you have basically now become politically correct. You are worldly, it's time to repent. And then this next verse, verse nine, who has saved us and called us with a holy calling. Let me read that again. Actually, let me go back to verse seven. For God hasn't given us the spirit of fear, but a power, love, and a strong mind. Therefore, don't be ashamed of the testimony of our Lord, nor of me, his prisoner, but share with me in the sufferings for the gospel according to the power of God, who has saved us and called us with a holy calling. You have a holy calling. You are a Nehemiah, a Deborah, a Joseph, a Mary. You are a Nehemiah. You are a Gideon. You are a Joshua. You are a Moses. I don't know. God knows. And how can you find out what your calling is? Repent. Spend time with the Lord, repenting. There's a beautiful verse in Revelation 3.20 where the Lord is talking about the lukewarm church. He says, I'm standing at the door and I knock. This is the door of your mind and my mind and my heart and your heart. He's standing at the door. He says, if anyone will hear my voice and will open the door, 
I'll come in and dine with him and he with me. Wow. And those that overcome, the next verse says, I will cause to sit with me on my throne as I overcame and sat on my father's throne. What a beautiful promise. So the Lord wants us to be overcomers. He wants to mentor us. He wants to have communion. He wants to have intimacy with us. And during that time of intimacy, guess what? You can, the more you peel off the old sin strongholds, the ego, your agenda, division, uh, pride, jealousy, competition, worldliness, se uh, sexual uh, flesh stuff, all this junk, you start to get rid of it. The more the Holy Spirit in you, the hope of glory rises up. The more you abide in Christ, the more you become an ambassador of Christ, the more you bear fruit to others, and you can ask the Lord, wow, what is my calling, Lord? I know it's to, to be saved. I know it's to, to be with you eternally in heaven. But what else? What is my unique calling? I believe you have a unique calling. In the same way that in John 15, 16, the Lord says, I've called you. You didn't call me, but I called you. That's where you put your name. You have a unique calling. It's not to sit and be a spectator. It's to pick up your cross and follow him in the one and only unique way in which you can do it. I can't do it for you any more than you can do Jeff. Hey, and there's no respecter of persons. There's no one calling better than another. There's no one that's going to be better than, than, than the next in the kingdom. In fact, one of the stories I've heard years ago, I, I, I have no personal knowledge. This is something I've just heard, but that in heaven, there were all these people congregating around uh, Billy Graham, for example, who's for sure up there now, looking at the um, jewels on his crown. And one person said, wow, there's, there's Billy Graham. Uh, and, and then the other person said, yes, but look at that person next to him with, and she has even more jewels on her crown. And who is she? an intercessor who had been praying for him for many, many years. See, God has a perfect calling. You might be 90 years old, you might be in a convalescent home right now, and you have a calling on your life if you've never realized it before. And you can ask the Lord, what is it? Yes, it could be that you are an intercessor. And it could be for a person, it could be for a nation. We are in a desperate place. In, far as I can see, every nation right now. Every nation is tending towards socialism and government, and it is rife with these various viruses and pandemics. And God is not placed first in the policies of any nation that I know of. You can certainly write me and let me know that I'm wrong. I would love to know that. By the way, yes, do write me. Pastor Jeff, J-E-F-F -F at repentday.com. I'd love to pray with you. I'd love to support you. Love to send you some free materials from our repentance uh, library, if you will. You can find those resources also on the website, which is www.repentday.com. So you have a calling. You could be a Nehemiah. You could be a Moses. You could be I don't know what it'll look like, but it's unique to you. And the Lord knew you before the creation of this earth. He honors you today. He has a calling on your life. Let's look again at Galatians 1, or really for the first time, Galatians 1, 6. He loves you beyond what you can imagine. And how do you get in touch with it? Repentance. Repentance, by the way, is how you, in the very first place, come into the kingdom. Matthew 4.17, the Lord's very first word. Shalom? No. Love you? No. Repent. Don't you think that's important? 
Don't you think that means something? It's essential. We have people sitting in a church today thinking that they're Christians. They've never repented. We have people preaching who think they're Christians and they are what's called hirelings. No, they're going through the motions. In fact, I sat under such a guy years ago that actually led me to become a pastor. What a phony, what a phony. Oh, he could use Christianese, but behind the scenes, he was really, I shouldn't go into it. You, you call me for details. <laughs> Let me just say he was um, an imposter, total imposter, no fruit. You will, the, Jesus says, you're going to know them by their fruit, the fruit of the Holy Spirit. If you haven't repented, let me tell you, my friend, you have no fruit. Today is the day to repent, not only personally, but of course, for our nations. And if you're a, quote, leader of a church, of a city, of a state or whatever, call for a day that all believers in the living God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob can repent. It's called corporate repentance. That's a wonderful experience. And it's Second Chronicles 7.14. That's what will heal a nation. When his people call by his name will humble themselves and pray and seek his face and turn from their wicked ways, then he's got a gift for you and me. Having repented, he will hear from heaven he will forgive sins and heal our land. Last one in the United States, 1918. Yeah, email me and tell me whether you think it's time. It's only been 103 years. <laughs> I'm being sarcastic. It's, it's a supernatural tragedy. We have people in, quote, power who are either ignorant of the word of God or cowards or some combination of both. Hello, don't be that. Cowards are the first group that don't get into heaven. Revelation 21.8. Okay, back to the calling. Galatians 1.6. Paul says to the Galatians, I marvel that you're turning away so soon from him who called you in the grace of Christ to a different gospel. In other words, here they are going sideways but you have been called. Yes, you're called to salvation, but it's even deeper. It's even deeper. I'm going to read what the footnote here says to that verse six in Galatians one. It says, this is from Kaleo. That's the Greek word. It's in Strong's number 2564. And he says, this is from the root call, the source of the English words call and clamor, the word is used to invite or to summon, and especially used of God's call to participate in the blessings of the kingdom. Participate. You're not a spectator. You're actually doing what God allowed you to be born to do. What if your life was totally about doing God's will? Yep, I'm slowly waking up to that. It ain't about, hey, let's have a good time. Let's go out and party. I'm going to do what I want. It's me. I make up my own rules. No sin. I can do whatever I want. No, to the contrary, guess what? By a miracle, you weren't aborted. By a miracle, you're alive today and are watching this before YouTube takes it down or, or some TV uh, channel takes it down. Yes, you're alive today for a kingdom purpose, using the talents that God gave you. I'll just give you a quick example. By some reasoning, I was given a musical talent to play the piano. My sister didn't have that. Oh, she took a few lessons, but she had other talents. She's far better as an artist than I am. Okay, no, no big deal. It's, it's not a big deal, but God has talents that he planted in you. And above all, he has a unique calling today in this very year 
where every nation that I know of is under attack for the Christian roots in that nation. It's under attack because we have dropped out God. We have not followed his holy word. Jesus says in Matthew 28, 18, all, A-L-L, that means all. You don't have to go to a theological college for five years to get a degree and figure out that word. All authority, Jesus, the risen Christ says, has been given to me, Jesus, in heaven and on earth. Well, instead of honoring that truth and lining up our nation's policies under that, based on the word of God, no, we picked up humanistic thinking, as far as I can see, in every nation, based on men's ideas. And Proverbs 14, 12, and 16, 25 re iterate this truth. There is a way that seems right to a person, but in the end, it leads to death. That's true for a person. It's true for a nation. This nation that I love is dying because we have, wow, I was going to use a crude word there. Forgive me, Lord. We have dumb people, Republicans and Democrats, both in high office in politics and in the church. I'm sorry, but that's true. Let's just be honest. It's very true. Very, very true. Did God's word go out of favor? No. Is Second Chronicles 7, 13 and 14 still true on the planet? Yes. And what does 13 say? Jesus, well, really, the Lord, I believe it was Jesus speaking. Uh, it was, it's one God, right? It's the Holy Spirit, it's Abba, it's Jesus. So this God is speaking to Solomon and says, when I, God, withhold the rain and when I send locusts and when I send pestilence, if my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways. Then I will hear from heaven, forgive their sin and heal their land. Period. So today we have pestilence in every nation. I'm not just talking about this massive death from COVID-19 millions of people on the planet unnecessarily killed. I sincerely believe this is a spiritual battle. The enemy has used human beings that have a desire for tyranny and control and money, and they manufactured or were grossly negligent in releasing from China a deadly virus. The answer to that pestilence is a God solution. God wants to change and heal and bless. And in the, mean, in, in the meantime, forgive those sins. If we call for such a national day, that's the whole purpose of this ministry called National Day of Repentance. But in the meantime, you and I, in the meantime, we have a calling. It's a surprise to me. I never know, knew I would be doing this. I can assure you at age 49, if you told me I would be making this video, I would not have stopped laughing for hours. Hours. It, it's, it, it was inconceivable to me. But I can tell you that God has a calling and he has a sense of humor. And he has such a deep love for each of us that the calling is, is the most beautiful experience you will ever have. When you get in touch with your unique calling, there is a deep, deep joy, a joy that you can't get anywhere else on the planet. It's because you are intimate with the living God. You are thankful. You're doing something that pleases him for the kingdom. 
And eternity is going to be so glorious because you'll be like that lady who prayed for Billy Graham in my, my story about heaven. The jewels on the crown. She had greater jewels on her crown. I don't know. No, look, <laughs> not even worthy of discussion. But do you get the point? God honors, God honors your unique calling. Let me see if there isn't one other wonderful scripture here, if we have some time. Romans 8. I love that whole chapter. I'm sure you do too. Check it out. By the way, there's a wonderful resource, BibleGateway.com. For free, you can go through all of these translations in your language. So do that. So, so powerful, especially using some key ones like the Amplified Version. So much more depth. By the way, in the Amplified Version, Mark chapter 1, where Jesus starts to preach the same as Matthew 4, 17. In verse 15, Mark 1, 15 in the Amplified, it says one of the definitions of repent, find your life purpose. Wow, that's what we're talking about, your calling, your unique calling. Okay, we're in Romans 8. I'm gonna go to the famous one that you know about. Verse 28. And we know that all things work together for good to those who love God and who are the called, the called out ones, according to his purpose. Do you get that? That's the favor. That is the favor. Well, time for me to go. God bless you. Until next time, Pastor Jeff. Pastor Jeff at repentday.com. God bless you.